in the pristine forests of the Rocky Mountains in the USA. Yoke, a lone bear cub, rolls around happily in the grass, unaware of the danger that is approaching. Not far away, on a rocky outcrop, an adult cougar licks its beak and makes a swift, athletic dash towards the cub. Realizing the danger, Yook begins to frantically run forward in an attempt to avoid the cougar's attack, but with the huge size difference, Yook finds that the distance between them shorter and shorter. In a panic, Yook climbs onto a dead tree that stretches across both sides of the river, but the path in front of it is broken, and Yook is unable to cross the river. Yook is in despair as it looks down at the swollen river below and turns back, but it's too late, the cougar has already caught up with it. Yook is trembling with fear, and with the roar of the cougar, suddenly the branch breaks and Yook falls into the river with it. York, who can't swim, lets out a terrified roar and struggles to climb the branch, holding onto it for dear life as it tries to escape from its enemy by going down the river. But the cougar, being a clever and patient animal, has already predicted where Yook is likely to be stranded, so it follows the current and jumps onto a rock in the middle of the river, where it waits for Yook to come forward. Yook senses the cougar's intentions and overcomes its fear of the water by jumping off the dead branch, desperately sliding its limbs and struggling towards the shore. Perhaps its desire to live is too strong, and at the last moment it realizes its potential, and with its legs stomping back, Yook manages to reach the shore. But in the face of absolute strength, it's all for naught. Before Yook knows it, the cougar has already launched a ferocious attack, and its sharp claws soon leave Yook bleeding and hissing in agony. Suddenly, Yonk remembers the ferocity of its mother when she is in danger, so it gets down on all fours and opens its mouth wide to let out an angry roar, threatening the cougar to stop its attack. Miraculously, the cougar gives up attacking Yook at the sound of its roar and leaves the area. It turns out that it is not afraid Yook, but rather Bart, the big guy who stands behind Yook and roars, a giant that it can't afford to mess with. When Yook spots Bart, it runs to it in excitement and snuggles up to it. Bart, the male, sticks out its tongue and licks Yook's wounds, guarding it like a mother. The heartwarming image of the two bears snuggling with each other has touched the hearts of countless people, but who knows that Bart and Yook are not related to each other by blood. At only four months old, Yook is not yet old enough to learn the skills of survival. It lives with its mother and does not need to do anything else but eat, drink and enjoy the fruits of mother's bounty all day long. However, disaster suddenly strikes. That day the she-bear takes Yook to the bottom of a cliff to get some sweet honey, when suddenly there is a loud noise and a loose rock from the mountain rolls down from a high place, unfortunately hitting the she-bear on the head. The she-bear cries out and falls to the ground without breathing. Yook is stunned as it watches the scene. Looking at its mother, who is motionless, it realizes that mom must be in great pain, so it struggles forward and keeps using its mouth and limbs to arch the boulder, looking clumsy and pitiful. After a series of struggles, Yook despairs, unable to move the stones with its weak body, but it doesn't understand what death is and thinks that its mom is just too tired to wake up. At this time, the annoying bees and butterflies also come to bully him. Yook waves its hands helplessly to expel them, and eventually runs out of energy and falls asleep in the afterglow of its mom's warmth. Yook thinks it will wake up to mom's licking, but after two full days at mom's side, Yook realizes that her body is becoming cold and stiff. It is only then that Yook understands that mom is no longer able to wake up and bring it food as in the past. Yook's hunger instincts compel it to leave mom's arms and embark on a journey to find food on its own, but the little one is not capable of hunting for food. Yook runs helplessly and confused through the wilderness, searching for anything to eat. Suddenly, a leaping frog catches its attention and Yook tries to catch it, but no matter how hard it tries, it just jumps up and down in rhythm with the frog and can't reach it at all. Not quite able to control its body, the bear is teased by the weaker frog and falls into a ditch, choking on the water. Yook is terrified and flees to the shore in a state of disarray, shaking off the water droplets. Hunger and fear invade the poor cub who has lost mom, and during the night Yook lies down on a rock on the edge of the cliff and falls asleep with uneasiness. But the world in the dream is still horrible, and it has a nightmare about frogs. Swarms of frogs with sharp fangs grow and swoop toward it. After dawn, Yook, who has not eaten for several days and nights, can only imitate the weed-eating gophers, runs through the rotten mountain flowers, and eats some wild flowers and grasses to fulfill its hunger. Suddenly, Yook looks up in surprise as if it hears something, and then stands upright to look into the distance, where it turns out that it has seen another bear living in the forest. Yook is delighted to have found a kindred spirit and enthusiastically goes after it to say hello. However, its enthusiasm is rewarded with an angry hiss, and Yook crumples up in place, grunting and afraid to come any closer. Yook doesn't give up, but follows the bear at a distance. When crossing the river, Yook is accidentally swept away by the fast-flowing water, and after countless efforts, it finally climbs up the bank and meets Bart, who is submerged in a mud puddle. It turns out that Bart has been injured and needs the mud puddle to ease its pain. Bart is a young and powerful adult brown bear who confidently makes its way through the forest, always enjoying a dull and contented day of resting under a tree or rubbing and scratching against it after a good meal and a good drink. Until this day, a group of experienced hunters come to the forest with weapons in hand. They find a huge footprint. After measuring, they are sure that it is an adult brown bear weighing more than 1,500 pounds left footprints. 
Excited, the voracious hunters hold up their looking glasses and manage to find Bart's trail. After tethering their horses, they give chase with shotguns raised, then hide in the brush and pull the trigger while the bear indulges in the tasty berries. After an ear-splitting shot, Bart is hit in the left forelimb and blood gushes out. The frightened bear, not enamored of the battlefield, roars in rage and flees the scene. Why did you shoot? You spooked him, son. Undeterred, Tom, the younger hunter, continues to track the bear with his binoculars, only to be taunted by the older hunter. The bear is a smart and cautious guy, and there's no way they'll be able to see it again. On top of that, the bear is an extremely vindictive creature, and they must continue to track and hunt it or face certain retaliation. They don't expect the bear's revenge to come so quickly. Without waiting for the old man to finish, they hear a wail of a horse. When they arrive at the place where the horses are tethered, there are bright red bloodstains everywhere, and one of the horses has been killed. The other horse is also badly injured and is hiding in a crevice in the rocks, shivering. When Tom goes to lead it, he is knocked down on the rock pile by the frightened and maddened horse, and his leg is injured, so that he can only walk back with a limp. By this time, Bart has long since fled several kilometers away, and because of the severity of its injuries, Bart only walk with difficulty on three legs. It is at the height of its wariness and is hostile to all creatures in the forest, even the young and harmless Yook, with whom it does not want to have too much contact. But the young and naive Yook does not give up following the bear. It timidly peeks out from the bushes, then wades through the muddy water to Bart's side, and, following its mom's example of licking its wounds, sticks out its tongue and licks gently at Bart's oozing wounds, helping to ease its pain. Bart's cold and hard heart becomes soft because of its gesture and silently accepts Yook to live with it. But as a he-bear, Bart has no experience in raising cubs, so it can only be good to Yook by instinct. At night, Bart takes a few-month-old bear cub to a shallow, rocky beach and puts on a spectacular hunt, where some fat fishes are thrown ashore for Yook's dinner. For the first time since its mom's death, Yook is happy and satisfied. At dawn, Bart begins to teach Yook the skills of the hunt. It takes it to hide behind a rock, always observing the movements of the deer. Then they lay down on the ground and creep forward, waiting for the right distance, then striking swiftly, focusing on a target in hot pursuit. Finally, the hunt is successful, and they have a full meal. Yook follows Bart around, ignorantly learning its every move, and then, snuggles up next to Bart and falls asleep, free from nightmares. But Bart doesn't always let Yook follow it, especially during courtship season, and it always moves quietly. When Bart sees a bear and likes it, it always shows its strength and might by destroying big trees. Yook, confused, chases after him and mimics it by pulling up the small pine tree, but after a long time of weak effort, it does not do any harm to the tree. When it stops panting, Bart has already taken the she-bear on a date deeper into the forest. Yook silently follows, then lies in wait under a pine tree a few dozen meters away from Bart. It is afraid of being abandoned again and losing its last refuge. During this time Yook accidentally eats a poisonous mushroom, causing it to hallucinate and see colorful mushrooms floating in midair, changing colors, and finally transforming into a butterfly that lands on its paw. Yook remembers the day mom died and a butterfly also fluttering around it. Since then the butterfly has become a symbol of its mom. With the butterfly by its side, Yook closes its eyes and falls into a deep sleep until a rain comes just in time to wake it up from its comatose state. At this point Bart's date with the she-bear is over, and it takes the cub with it and sets off on a new journey. Unbeknownst to them, new dangers are approaching. The hunters have not given up their plan to capture Bart after being retaliated against. They split up into two groups. Tom, the young hunter, is stationed at the camp with his shotgun, sitting cross-legged in front of the fire. He uses a dagger to cut the bullet's head to increase its lethality in an attempt to kill Bart with a single shot. Tom smiles with satisfaction at the small hole left by the bullet as it pierces the tree trunk. Just then, there is a barking sound and the man excitedly looks away with his looking glass and realizes that the old hunter has returned with a boatload of hounds. He whistles excitedly in celebration, as if he's already seen Bart besieged and dying at the point of his gun. Then they leading a pack of hounds with sleek, muscular lines and full of power, follow the footprints of the bears along the river and track them all the way, successfully locating Bart. Bart, who is drinking water at the river's edge, is keenly aware of the scent of danger in the air and rushes to its feet to observe his surroundings, and Yook follows suit, learning the bear's survival skill of recognizing danger. Immediately afterward, Bart starts running up the hill with the bear, trying to avoid an unnecessary fight. Yook is still too weak to easily overcome the steep cliffs, even with the big bear leading its escape. As the danger approached, Yook becomes more anxious and lets out an uncontrollable wail of terror, which Bart hears and stops in its tracks, heading towards the cub. Watching the catching up hounds, Bart doesn't leave the cub behind, but instead stands in front of it and doesn't move at all, using its huge body to cover Yook until it's well hidden and can't be detected. Then Bart starts to fight back against the hounds that are tearing it apart. A fight to the death unfolds on the steep cliffs. By the time the hunters arrive on the scene, Bart has lured the hounds away from the cave where the cub is hiding and has disappeared. But the cub does not yet understand the danger of the human heart. It finds Bart disappeared, rushes out of the cave to look for its trail. The result is found by the hunters and caught back. 
They put along, then rope around the bear's neck and tie it to a tree like a dog, and Yook is frightened and climbs up the tree, clinging to the trunk and not letting go. Only after the hunters are asleep does the hungry cub climb back down the tree, looking for something to eat, when it unexpectedly sees its mom. Yook tries to get to mom's side, struggling to free itself from the rope but always coming up short. Yook has no choice but to start tearing at the rope with its mouth, and then lies down next to its mom, who has only one skin left, and falls asleep, as if it can still feel mom's warmth. When Tom is awake, he looks at the harmless appearance of the little bear lying by the bearskin, which excites his pity and compassion, and hastens to pour some sweet-smelling milk and feed it to the little bear. It seems that the little guy is not afraid of people, greedily to lick the milk in the plate, and now and then also stands up to pamper and cute, so that the hunters laugh out loud. But even so, they still do not give up the plan to hunt the big bear. You pick a spot up there. I'll take the other side. Sooner or later, he's gotta come through here. Unbeknownst to them, all their actions have been clearly seen by Bart, who is standing on the mountain observing them. As time passes, Tom, who is waiting for Big Bear, gradually loses his patience and vigilance, and goes to the spring by the cliff to fetch water without his gun. Suddenly, he feels a chill on his back, as if something is creeping up on him. Tom turns around and sees that the bear is blocking the only trail out, hissing angrily at him. Tom, with no gun and no path to follow, is terrified and huddled on the edge of the cliff, shivering. His tightly wound emotions completely collapse at the sight of the bear's incredibly sharp claws on his paws. With his hands on his head, Tom falls to his knees, crying and begging Bart to spare his life. Bart looks at the man's helpless form and seems to remember the weak yook, then silently retreats, choosing to spare the man who had hurt him. Tom looks at the distant back of the bear and suddenly realizes who is the master of this mountain wilderness and understands the importance of revering nature. Later, he stops the old hunter who tries to shoot and lets the cute little bear go. After so many trials and tribulations, Yook finally grows up, and when it faces a threat that is stronger than it is, it stands up bravely and calls out a hiss that represents its growing up. In the days that followed, even without mom, it no longer feared the full range of challenges that lay ahead. When winter comes and the forest is covered in snow and ice and turns white, Bart and Yook snuggle together and fall sweetly asleep in the cave. The movie may be over, but Bart and Yook's story continues. If you like my channel or enjoy watching me dance, please leave a comment in the comment section saying dance. Adam.